Hello, Clay County. I've got a uh, fairly long one today, I think. Uh, I hope you stay with me on this one. Um, there's a, a chain of interesting ideas that I want to put together for you. And, of course, this is still dealing with the Big Bang. This might be my last, though, in the Big Bang uh, series for at least a little while. But I want to take you through a series of ideas. And, and this one's a difficult one to swallow because we're so inundated with the media out there telling us that certain things are true. And what I'm going to propose to you today is that black holes don't exist, or at least there's a strong bit of evidence that shows that they don't exist. And then I'm going to tie that back in a little bit later with the Big Bang idea. So uh, please stay with me on this. Uh, I'm going to start, first of all, um, with the idea of what black holes are. Black holes are... Uh, posited as the idea based on Einstein's uh, special relativity that uh, as stars get older and they run out of fuel, the fuel is what causes them to explode outward and have the radius that they do. But as they get older, that fuel is being used up. And so gravity is pulling them in tighter and tighter. And as more of that hydrogen turns into helium, they compact down and eventually they get so small that either... Uh, a super reaction occurs and they supernova or they get tightly so tightly packed down that they compress into uh, such a gravi an intense gravitational field that not even light can escape it and that's what they called uh, a black hole. Now uh, the official name for these things is called a singularity and that's where all the mass uh, all the matter in the star is compressed down into a single point in space. If that sounds familiar to you, that's the same thing that they say is true of the black hole, I mean, of the, the Big Bang, uh, but of the whole universe at the beginning of time, um, according to that model. So that's that's why it's important that we talk about black holes. Um, recently, there was an article that was released just this year of some guys that were talking about an experiment that they did in a bathtub that showed some of the properties of black holes. Now, why a bathtub, you may ask? Well, what they were trying to do is they were trying to show that as a wave passes a vortex, then the energy of that wave gets increased by passing near that vortex. And so uh, what they did is they drained the water and they had some, some dye and there was black lights and all kinds of cool stuff going on. And they made waves in the water that would pass by the vortex but come out on the other side and then they would measure them. And it was an interesting experiment. I, I liked reading about it. But there was a couple of problems. Number one, they were talking about mostly electromagnetism because water is not fundamentally gravitational in that scenario. Yes, gravity is causing it to go off the drain, but gravity isn't what's causing the wave uh, energy issue that they were studying. Um, what causes the uh, waves to pass through the medium of water is electromagnetism, the, the association of the very uh, various molecules next to each other. And so there's a huge hang-up there with trying to study something that is intense, gravitational, and way out in space by looking at a really large bathtub full of water that's draining. And this is kind of what they have to do with the science of cosmology because right now our star, our star drive technology doesn't get us past the moon very well unless it's unmanned and then we can maybe get to uh, the edge of our own solar system. We certainly can't directly study any other stars and we really don't have any direct information or confirmation that there is even such a thing as a black hole. We've just assumed that they're true like a lot of the other things that we uh, have studied uh, for the last hundred years since Einstein. Uh, these things are kind of beyond our direct grasp, and so they're uh, something that we have to study indirectly. And that leads to a lot of problems if we uh, have an assumption and it seems to be okay, and then we just run with it, and then we build so many other things on it. And um, it goes back to an article I actually gave my classes at the beginning of the year, and I've been doing this now for a few years, called Science is Broken. And what it is, is it's an article that talks about how science has become a kind of a popularity contest. There are these ideas that have become popular over time and kind of unassailable. Nobody is allowed to question them. And so the number of articles that are written, as long as they're supporting the status quo, they tend to get accepted and published without too much scrutiny. 
And then all of these errors are incorporated into these papers and nobody checks them. And so uh, we have less of a, a scientific, a hardcore scientific study and more of a, I need some grant money, so I'm going to write a paper and, and uh, get popular and then somebody will throw me some, some money my way. And that's a major problem. Well, one of the papers that is against the grain, one of the interesting papers that came out and said, uh, I'm pretty sure Einstein was wrong, pretty sure Stephen Hawking was wrong. There's a lot of things that were, were problematic with the idea of black holes was introduced by a lady named Laura Mercini Hofton. She's the University of Chapel Hill in North Carolina. She wrote her paper in 2014. And what she said, in essence, was is that as a star would collapse, just dealing with their models, not actually measuring them, but just dealing with their models, what she said is that um, this radiation that escapes out of a star that's collapsing into a black hole, it's called Hawking radiation, uh, after the, the late uh, Stephen Hawking, um, too much of this radiation would escape, too much mass, because matter and energy are essentially the same thing, according to Einstein, and so too much would escape, and so there wouldn't be enough gravitational uh, pull left to collapse fully into a black hole. It should go supernova every time uh, if it doesn't become just a, simply like a, a brown dwarf or a black dwarf or just a really small, cool star. And so um, her paper, of course, has gotten a lot of blowback, uh, but nobody's actually come along and said, well, this is why her paper's false. It's still hanging around, still hanging on. Uh, as pretty solid evidence that uh, black holes really just don't exist and that all of the things that we have attributed to black holes, maybe we need to look at for a different type of hypothesis to explain these phenomena. And one of the things that has been coming out in the past 10, 15, maybe even 20 years is that <clears throat> Einstein, who posited a gravity-driven universe, might have been on the wrong track altogether. And they have been positing that the entire universe is not so much driven by gravity, but by electromagnetism. Now, we've talked about this in the past. Remember, electromagnetism as a force is 134 quintillion times stronger than gravity. That's a lot of zeros. And so if the universe is driven by electromagnetism, then some of the things that, that we've been trying to explain through gravity might find themselves e more easily explained through electromagnetism. And so um, one of these papers that I want to talk to you about was, uh, it was put out by a man named Bernard Bly. He graduated from Oxford. Um, he's worked at CERN, uh, where the super collider is now. Um, right now he's currently working on cryogenics and low temperature thermodynamics which is very, very interesting. He's very big into the field of thermodynamics, which is something that we really talk about a lot when we deal with stars. And so what he posed in his paper was that stars are positive. These stars, um, they're plasmas, and so they have a lot of um, free-flowing electrons. The electrons are not attached to any one atom because of such high energy and such high uh, temperature. And what ends up happening with a star as it collapse, collapses due to gravity or through whatever attractive force, which is mostly gravity, then the electrons repel each other out of the star. And you are left behind with a more and more positive star as time goes by. Well, as gravity is trying to attract it down, the protons that are left over are trying to repel each other. Now, there's not very many to begin with. But as more and more electrons get kicked out of the star, more and more are becoming positive, and there's going to be a limit to how far that star can collapse. And uh, as the electrons get kicked out, they get pulled toward the center of the galaxy. And his paper eventually shows uh, that black, black holes would thus be impossible. And this is kind of a separate pathway to corroborate what uh, Laura Hofton was saying, that um, black holes can't exist because stars can't collapse. And if black holes, which are singularities, can't exist because of uh, these various reasons, then you have a, a problem with the idea of the big singularity of the whole universe existing. But what's really interesting about uh, Bernard Bly's work is the reason he wrote the paper was not to disprove black holes, 
the reason that he wrote the paper was to show that dark matter doesn't exist. Dark matter is something that is not needed. Remember we talked about how dark matter was a placeholder. Well, it's not needed according to his model. If it's an electromagnetic model, then making up dark matter and the placeholder to explain a lot of the phenomenon that are going on in the universe is completely and absolutely unnecessary. And this goes back to that whole electric universe uh, type thing. And um, his work is pretty fascinating. I've included the link below if you want to uh, take a shot at reading it. Um, but if dark matter doesn't exist, if, if Bernard Bly and Laura Hoffman are right, um, then the Big Bang model is completely false. If the Big Bang, Big Bang model is false, what are we left with? And note, again, this is all science. There, everything about this is a scientific exploration of these models that uh, allegedly give us all the millions and millions and millions of years that evolution needs to be true. And all we're doing is scientifically examining them and showing them to be scientifically false. If we don't have a Big Bang, we don't have an old universe. If we don't have an old universe, then we don't have enough time for evolution. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you have gained a little bit of information out of this. I hope it wasn't too technical. I'm certainly available to answer any questions that you might have. You can leave comments below the video. Or you can leave the com comments on our Facebook page if you're a member there. Uh, or on MeWe. We're, we're, we're on MeWe now. So uh, any of those places, if you want to discuss this and, and ask questions and talk about it, you are more than welcome to, as long as we keep a civil tone and we keep it on uh, track with just the topic at hand and not, and not uh, personally addressing each other. Uh, so anyway, keep on learning, and uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time.